In this video, we're going to continue our study of quantifiers by talking about both negating quantified statements and also translating. So it's all going to kind of come together. We're going to translate, we're going to negate, we're going to translate the negated statement. So it'll be just a ball of fun. Let's remind ourselves of the quantifiers we've spent the most time with so far, uh, especially in case you're not just joining us from video 11, which talked about the quantifiers. The two that we've talked the most about are the universal quantifier, for all, and the existential quantifier, there exists. So if I have p of x to be a propositional function, x has taken a course in programming for the domain of students in your class, then I want to translate what does this statement mean for all x p of x? What does that mean in context, in relationship to everything they've told me here? Well, for all x says for every student in my class, p of x is true. So p of x is that x has taken a course in programming. So I could say, for all students in my class, they have taken a course in programming. Or I can say every student in my class, oops, in my class has taken a course in programming. So if they are in my class, they have taken a course in programming is essentially what I'm saying. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now there is, there exists some x such that p of x is true. So there is a student in my class. I wish I could write a little bit better. There is a student in my class who has taken a course in programming. So again, that is each of those translated. Every student for all, there is a student or there exists a student. And again, I'm talking about the domain and I'm talking about what the condition is of the propositional phrase. Now let's take a look at negating those exact same statements. So negate the quantifier. So instead of negating the propositional function, I'm looking at negating the quantifier. So let's look at the first one. If you'll recall, the first time we looked at this, we didn't have the not, and we said this meant for all x, p of x, meant every student in my class has taken a course in programming. Now I'm saying that's not true. So not every student in my class has taken a course in programming. Or if not every student in my class has taken a course in programming, I can say, there is a student in my class who hasn't taken a course in programming. Do you agree that those are the same? Hasn't taken a course in programming. So if the positive, the non-negated statement said, every student in my class has taken a course in programming, then by negating it, I'm saying there's a student who hasn't taken a course in programming. Guess what that looks like if I want to rewrite it? There exists a student in my class who has not taken a course in programming. So what we're saying is these two statements are equivalent to one another. Notice for all has turned into there exists and the negation went from the quantifier to the propositional function. Let's take a look at our second example. Previously, we said there exists some x such that p of x meant there is a student in my course who has taken a course in programming. 
this is saying there is not a student in my course that has taken a course in programming. Another way I could write that is all students in my class, ugh, in my class, have not taken a course in programming, which means the same thing. Now, what's another way I can write all students in my class have not taken a course in programming? I bet you can guess for all students in my class, they have not taken a course in programming. So notice again that these two statements are equivalent to one another. The there not there exists becomes for all and p of x becomes not p of x. So these equivalences are actually De Morgan's laws for quantifiers, for negating quantifiers. And it's just exactly what we talked about. Not there exists some x such that p of x is equivalent to the statement for all of x, not p of x. So that statement, either one, is true when p of x is false for every x, and it's false when there's an x for which p of x is true. Same thing if I have not for all x p of x, that's the same thing as they're saying there exists some x such that not p of x is true. And again, it's true when there is an x for which p of x is false, and it's false when p of x is true for every x. So you can see that's why we've been focusing on these two quantifiers, quantifiers is that they are essentially sort of opposites of one another, or they tie into one another quite well when we are translating and negating. We're going to look at these two statements together. We're going to translate them and negate them. And there is some ins and outs that we're going to talk about with translating. So in terms of translating these, just stick with me. And on our next example, I'm going to give you some different ways that we can translate. But for now, just stick with the way that I'm going to translate, and then we'll negate from there. So again, this is an English statement that I'm going to have you translate into a propositional function, then negate that propositional function, and then translate it back to English. So all sorts of fun with translations. So again, stick with me for the translation on this one. We're going to call h of x is going to be, uh, is going to represent x is honest. Now you might be saying, hold up, you didn't talk about the fact that they're a politician. And I'm going to say x is honest for domain of all politicians. Oops, got a fat finger on that one. Politicians. So then my statement, there is an honest politician, can then be written as there exists a politician such that that politician is honest. So there exists an x such that h of x is true. From here, remember, I'm looking at negating. So if I said, for not there exists some x, h of x, then that, based on the De Morgan's law for quantifiers, tells me that I can rewrite that as for all x, not h of x. And if that's the case, how would I translate that? How would I translate the negation? So now looking at this, I'm saying for all x, for all politicians, this is false. So what does that translate to in English? Every politician is dishonest. or all politicians are not honest, which of course can be written, every politician is dishonest. So now let's take a look at our second example. 
we have all Americans eat cheeseburgers. Again, it's all based on how we translate the initial. So I'm going to say C of X represents X eats cheeseburgers. Oops, cheeseburgers, you get the idea. And it says all Americans, and so I'm going to say for domain of all Americans. So given that translation, then my statement for all American, I'm sorry, all Americans eat cheeseburgers can then be written as for all X, um, C of X. I couldn't remember what letter I used. For all X, C of X. Then if I'm going to negate that statement, that's not for all X, C of X, would translate or be equivalent to, logically equivalent to, there exists some X such that not C of X, which means there exists some American who does not eat cheeseburgers or not every American eats cheeseburgers. Pardon the bad handwriting. So again, that's how we could negate those statements. Let's look a little bit deeper now at how we translate. So in the last example, I sort of translated for you and said, hey, just go with it. But now let's talk about the fact that there's not just one correct way that I could translate statements. And a lot of it just depends on your domain. So notice, depending on my domain or universe, the translation of a statement is going to look different. So for my first example, and again, I'm going to translate the same statement twice. Uh, the statement is, some student in this class has visited Mexico. So the domain, let's say the domain is students in this class. Well, that's going to be pretty easy. All I have to do is give whatever the propositional um, function is going to be. So I'm going to let m of x represent x has visited Mexico. And it's important to do that. Oops, here I said to and I wrote to, has visited Mexico. So it's important to define what your propositional function is going to be because you might have more than one of them. In this case, I'm just going to have one. And because the domain is students in my class, I'm saying some student or there exists a student such that M of X is true. So that's a super duper easy one because if MX represents X has visited Mexico and I already have it um, whittled down to people in this class or students in this class, then all I have to do is translate some student. So let's take a look at when it gets a little bit more complicated. Now I'm saying the domain is all people. So not only do I have to have an M of X represent X has visited Mexico, but I also have to have something that tells me that's a st student in this class. So we're gonna let C of X represent X is a student in this class. So now what? I have two propositional functions and what I'm saying is there still exists some student, so there still exists some X, but that X has to have both of these conditions. So I'm going to put a parenthesis, M, X, and C of X. So M of X and C of X. So again, I'm saying there exists some person out there in the world who both has visited Mexico and is a student in this class.
Now, keep in mind what we said before. These parentheses are very important. In order for this to be a proposition that has a true or false truth value, every variable has to either has to be bound in some way. So it either has to have a value or it has to have a quantifier. By putting the parentheses here, this quantifier goes to both of those propositional functions. So these are both two correct ways that I could write the exact same statement based on whatever my domain happens to be. Here's a practice for you to try. So go ahead and try this question, and when you are ready, press play to see how you did. Notice I have given you two different domains, so I want you to basically translate this twice. So for the first one, I've already given you the domain of students in this class. So that takes care of the student in this class part, not the every part, just the student in this class part is, is satisfied already because that's the domain. So has visited Canada or Mexico means that I'm going to say m, at, m of x represents x has visited Mexico. C of x represents x has visited Canada. So now what I'm translating is every student in this class. So every student tells me all students. So for all students in this class, x being the domain of students in this class, then I'm saying they visited Canada or Mexico. So now I'm saying Canada or Mexico. So that's one way to translate this. The other way to translate this is obviously a little bit harder because, and I'm not going to recopy these, I'm going to use these again, but I also have to have one that says that, and it doesn't matter what uh, variable you use here, I'm, or not variable, what capital letter for what propositional function you're going to use, but I'm going to say s of x um, represents or denotes x is a student in this class. So in addition to m of x and c of x, I now also have s of x. And now how would I translate the statement? For all people, if that person is a student in this class, then either they visited Canada or they visited Mexico. So this one got a little bit trickier because I now have an if then, because I'm saying if they're in my class, then it's true they have visited either Canada or Mexico. So that is how I would translate the for all statement dealing with the universe or domain of all people. So based on our last examples, you may be starting to see that things can get a little bit complicated, especially when we're negating. Um, but even just writing a propositional function given different domains. So up next, we're going to take a look at what happens when we have nested quantifiers and if we have to negate a nested quantifier.